Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. It is Wednesday, October 14th, and from absentee voting issues in Lucas County to day three of Senate Judiciary hearings, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But before we dive too deep into anything else, I do want to get you caught up on the latest coronavirus data from the state. To date, there were 2,039 new cases compared to the 21-day average of 1,282. So that is the biggest 24-hour jump we've seen in Ohio since the pandemic began. Deaths reported have stayed right at the average of 16. Hospitalizations had a big jump too, nearly doubling the average with 151. The 21-day average is just at 83. And ICU admissions are up as well, although not as dramatically with 17 compared to the average of 12. And this morning, we got an update from the Lucas County Board of Elections on absentee ballot fulfillment. The board apologized for problems with a third-party vendor contracted to print and ship the ballots. That vendor is Cleveland-based Midwest Direct, and they're currently in charge of printing, stuffing, and mailing elections materials for 20 out of Ohio's 88 counties. Board of Elections Director Lavera Scott said that out of the roughly 62,000 absentee ballots Midwest Direct should be mailing to voters, the firm has now mailed 55,000 and at 6,500 have not been sent out yet. And while they get an update at the end of each day, Scott said she wouldn't spend speculate on when the mailings would be completed. But despite today's update, U.S. Representative Marcy Kaptur, County Commissioner Pete Gerken, and State Senator Teresa Fetter joined together this afternoon calling on Secretary of State Frank LaRose to immediately intervene and for expedited delivery of all absentee ballots in Lucas County and the other counties working with Midwest Direct. Uh, I am calling and I believe the others will probably join me in just some investigation of what happened at Midwest. Uh, it's not just this county that, that it happened to. Uh, Ohio is a critical state, and for counties to lose any day of balloting the way they did it is suspect. LaRosa's office released this statement. We've been in regular contact with both the vendor and affected counties. Our understanding from talking to both is that the ballots are being printed, processed, and sent out as soon as they are completed. All county mailings are expected to be delivered to the USPS this week. Voters will have almost three full weeks to complete their ballot and postmark it by November 2nd. And Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett presented herself today in the final round of Senate confirmation questioning as a judge with a conservative approach and deeply held personal and religious beliefs, but as someone committed to keeping an open mind about rulings on the court. Senate Republicans are championing President Donald Trump's pick, an originalist who adheres to a strict reading of the Constitution. But Democrats are digging deeper into the judge's approach to health care, abortion, racial equality, and voting rights, but they're running out of time if they want to stop her quick confirmation. The health care debate has been central to this week's hearings, drawing a sharp exchange among senators at one point. Barrett was asked if her strict adherence to originalism means that a president could not unilaterally deny the right to vote based on race, which pointed to restrictions on mail-in ballots being set up in several states. Barrett agreed that there are many laws that protect the right to vote, including the 14th and 15th Amendments to the Constitution, but stopped short of a blanket statement. She said, I really can't say anything more. Another senator asked what she thinks of Trump's view that he can pardon himself. Barrett said that the president's ability to pardon himself has never been tested in court, and the question calls out for legal analysis. She said, it's not one that I can offer a view. An initial committee vote on the nomination is set for tomorrow, which would then allow for final approval by the full Senate sometime later this month. And the second presidential debate between President Donald Trump and Democrat nominee Joe Biden is officially off, but both candidates will be instead holding dueling town halls. So NBC News announced this morning it will be holding President Trump's town hall in Miami on October 15th at 8 p.m. The one-hour event will be moderated by Savannah Guthrie. NBC News said it had a statement from National Institutes of Health Clinical Director Dr. Clifford Lane indicating he and Dr. Anthony Fauci have reviewed Trump's medical data and concluded with a high degree of confidence the president is not shedding infectious virus. Joe Biden is also scheduled a town hall with ABC News for the same night. Anchor George Stephanopoulos will moderate the event in Philadelphia. Both news organizations, of course, said the event will be held in accordance with state and local government regulations amid the ongoing pandemic. And that third debate scheduled for October 22nd in Nashville, Tennessee is still on at this point. So 
be ready for that as well. And before I go, let's look at something non-election related. As a warning, I'm back on my space kick, but this is really cool. The night sky will bring an added treat this Halloween as it features a spectacle that has not occurred in nearly two decades. Not only will the 31st feature a full moon for All Hallows Eve, but a spooky blue moon. And sorry to ruin the fun, but despite its name, a blue moon doesn't appear blue in color. It's really just a nickname given to the second full moon in a calendar month. But the moon can take on different colors like orange and red when it's near the horizon. So keep a lookout while you're out there trick-or-treating or, you know, just take a peek in your backyard. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course, subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.